Okay, so let's talk about quantum supremacy. So whether you're here because of the Google Willow thing or because of some other reason that quantum computers are all over social media again, you've come to the right place. Because what I'm going to do here is to explain it and also to put it into context. So like talking about where we are right now and what is going to happen next. First off, quantum computers aren't just better computers. They work totally differently and if we are really smart about it, we can find quantum algorithms that are vastly superior than any classical algorithm. So quantum computers can be incredibly good at a small number of highly specific tasks, but they have no advantage whatsoever at anything else. Secondly, in the foreseeable future, quantum computers require a lot of technology and facilities, so you can think of them as in the same category as supercomputers. Um, government institutes or companies will have one, but you won't have one at home, let alone in your pocket. So you won't be watching YouTube or playing Fortnite on a quantum computer anytime soon. So there is this analogy that quantum computers aren't like faster cars, they are like boats. But personally I find it more appropriate to say they are aircraft. Aircraft aren't just faster cars, they are faster because they can fly. They operate completely different to cars. But they need an entire infrastructure of airports and other things to move around and they aren't always the superior choice. Uh, for example, you can't quickly fly by airplane within a city. That wouldn't make sense. Um, between different cities is another story. Unless one of those cities has no airport. And then again, aircraft won't do you anything good. So yeah, quantum computers are like aircraft. Right, what is quantum supremacy? We talk about quantum supremacy whenever a quantum computer can be demonstrated to be able to do something enormously faster than a classical computer, including supercomputers. And we're not just talking a little bit faster, but like kicking ass levels of faster. In our cars and aircraft picture, this would be equivalent to flying a plane from, for example, northern Norway to Cape Town and showing this is way, way faster than going the same route by car. By aircraft, you can do that in less than 24 hours, while the same journey by car will realistically take weeks. And this part often brings up the discussion whether quantum computers can do things that classical computers can't or not which I frankly find totally uninteresting. Technically, this is incorrect, as quantum computers cannot do tasks that are impossible to classical computers. They can only do those tasks faster. But once this advantage hits a threshold where a classical computation would have to run for thousands of years to get what a quantum computer can solve in minutes, for all practical purposes, there is no more difference to doing something impossible. And there is another important thing. We cannot know for certain, so we cannot prove that certain quantum algorithms are actually faster than any classical algorithms could be. They're just faster than any classical algorithms that we know of. In fact, we currently do not know for certain whether quantum computers can indeed have any efficiency advantage over classical computing in principle. All we do know is that we know some quantum algorithms that are exponentially faster than any classical stuff we know. So quantum supremacy is at present a supremacy over anything we know, not necessarily over anything that could be. Another frequent criticism is that the tasks that are used to show quantum supremacy are chosen to do just that, while being completely useless. Which is on the one hand a fair criticism, but it kind of misses the point of trying to show quantum supremacy. It is a proof of concept, not an application. 
Whether the thing is of practical importance does not necessarily matter and it might even be too subjective to be any good criterion. Of course, eventually quantum computers will only be of any interest to us if they can do something actually useful. So uh, that is at least a long-term goal. So right now, March of 2025, has quantum supremacy been shown so far? Well, this is where we'll have to talk about Google. Google first announced that they had achieved quantum supremacy by October of 2019, when their new Sycamore chip had allegedly performed a task in less than three minutes that would take the world's fastest supercomputer 10,000 years to replicate. The task in question is called random circuit sampling. It basically means generating a random quantum circuit and then running an input on this circuit millions of times. The collective output must be consistent with the output state of the quantum circuit. Uh, that might sound somewhat contrived, because it is. The only reason this task was chosen is because it is difficult to compute classically, as it becomes exponentially harder with the size of the circuit. So it was specifically chosen because it would be convenient for a quantum computer and very hard for a classical one. Unsurprisingly, it has no direct practical applications. Anyway, this claim was later disputed by several computing groups. For example, an IBM group claimed that they could reduce the runtime of the classical computation from 10,000 years to much less than that. They pointed out that you could use the Summit supercomputer at Oak Ridge National Labs, which has barely enough hard drive space, 250 petabytes, to fit the entire 53 qubit state vector on it and then brute force the calculation in 2.5 days. And further advancements in both hardware and algorithms have since narrowed down this gap much, much more. So at best, this quantum supremacy claim from 2019 is marginal and at worst, it's non-existent. However, in December 2024, Google released results from their new 105 qubit Willow chip, on which they had also run random circuit sampling. This time, they claim a quantum runtime of 5 minutes, while the classical computation would take 10 to the 25 years. That is this number of years we're talking about. You need to understand that this is a fantasy number. Nothing in the universe takes that long. In fact, this is 1000 trillion times the entire age of the universe itself. So it seems likely at this point that this Willow result will stand and will count as proper quantum supremacy. Which raises another interesting question. Um, if classical computers cannot replicate these results, how do we know that the quantum computation was correct in the first place? On the one hand, there are computations that are very hard to do, but easily verified. And on the other hand, sometimes you can only directly check the result for smaller systems and then infer the solution for bigger systems indirectly, which was done in this example. One thing that quantum supremacy does not mean is that quantum computers are taking over now. Because again, just because they are better at one specific thing does not mean they are better at everything. In fact, the very quantum computer that achieved supremacy, like the existing Google machines, might not be capable to do much actually useful stuff. Achieving quantum supremacy is an undeniable milestone, but it does not necessarily have immediate consequences. Remember aircraft. Imagine you just demonstrated flight for the first time. This in itself is amazing, but nothing directly follows from this. Just because you took off with the right flyer and took it for a short spin of 100 meters or so, 
This doesn't mean aircraft are now solved and you can fly first class to Australia next week. You just took off and there is still a long way to go and there's also no guarantee that everything will work out. And that's exactly where we are with quantum computers now. Our current generation of quantum computers are like the right flyer. We have no guarantees, just the potential. And whatever you take from this, maybe shows more about what you want to see rather than what's really there at the moment. Finally, there is one more thing I need to address that always comes up when talking about quantum supremacy, which is the name, supremacy. Can I get the, uh, it's also tiresome meme here? Thanks. Well, there was a comment in Nature in 2019 that decried the use of the word supremacy because it has, quote, overtones of violence, neocolonialism and racism through its association with white supremacy. Rather, the word advantage was suggested as an alternative. And mostly the reply from the broader quantum community has been, um, are you serious? But also in parts, the term quantum advantage is now being used. Sometimes they are used interchangeably and sometimes for different things, like quantum advantage is used for quantum supremacy in tasks that are actually useful. But all of those uses are very inconsistent. My personal take on this is very clear. The idea that words are violent and cause harm as if they were evil spells is deeply unserious and infantilizing. Nothing about this is based on facts. This is a fabricated narrative pushed by highly ideological people. And you know, it's okay to not like a word, even for silly ideological reasons. But it's a very different thing to demand that everybody else also not use that word. Because that is forcing compliance and compelling speech. Mixing science with ideology and politics is damaging and dangerous and runs counter to what science is supposed to do figuring out how the universe works. So no, we don't need to talk more about how quantum supremacy is a violent word that causes real harm, because it really doesn't. And nobody really believes that. And it's a deeply silly thing to say. Rather, this needs to be talked about so little that we should invent a completely new type of silence for it.